Hello everyone, my name is Megan Lavoda. I'm an ENFJ, and today I'm going to be continuing on my series of what have I learned about life through this personality type. Now today I'm going to actually be talking about ENFJ. Even though I am an ENFJ, I still have learned things about life and gained some insights through the ENFJs in my life and through the ENFJ, you know, worldview through F, E, and N, I. And so a lot of these things I'm going to be saying, you know, I'm clearly going to relate to because I am an ENFJ, but I'm going to try my best to make this like a sort of objective observation about the things that F, E, and N, I notices about the world. And at the end of the day, I really do believe that, you know, our soul or like whoever we are is not like the same exact thing as your personality type. So even though I'm an ENFJ, who I am, my soul, whatever, Megan, still can observe my brain interaction and my, or my brain patterns, my personality, my ego, and notice the things that it notices, if that makes sense. And so I can sort of notice how my FE and NI responds without always identifying with it. And you know, I think this is kind of a healthy thing. Honestly, I probably should make a video about that topic on another time. Comment below if that sounds interesting to you, because I do think that it is possible to sort of take a step back and observe your personality as it's going and not 100% identifying. And you know, because before, uh, as I was younger, I used to really identify with FE in the sense of like, I'm a person that does things for people. That's who I am. And when you step back, you could be like, you know, I do, I am that way. That is my personality. That's how I choose to be. That's how I feel wired to be. But I don't always have to be under the thumb of FE. I can choose to, at times, go against the grain. I can choose to, at times, you know, listen to my own emotions and not the group's emotions. So that's a whole other thing. So the main insight that I would say that I have learned through the collective energy of what it means to be an ENFJ would be that if you feel something and if you want something, then, you know, you feel that way for a reason and everyone has it. Everyone has something that they want in life and everyone wants to be loved. And there's no point in shaming yourself for wanting something because that is the passion in life. Having a passion for something and wanting something is what makes you human. And if you don't have that passion, and if you don't have that emotion, then you're never going to know how to be happy. And listening to your emotions and making actions that are based on your emotions is a great way to live a happy, healthy life because if you don't even pay attention to your emotions, then you could get stuck in a job you hate and stuck in a city you hate and stuck in a relationship you hate. If you don't actually listen to your emotions and if you aren't afraid to make some impulsive decisions or some things that might seem kind of risky and like follow your heart, then you're gonna stay stuck. You might just feel a little blah. And you know, in my opinion, it's way better to have a emotionally active life than an emotionally inactive life. Uh, to be numb is probably the worst feeling in the world. I would so much rather feel unhappy than to feel numb and like I'm going through the motions because at least when I'm unhappy, I at least know okay, I don't like this. It at least gives me some direction of what I do want and where I do want to go. And I think that ENFJs understand this and that's why you might see them getting emotional about a certain topic because they are wanting to fully process that emotion and understand what does that mean in my life? What does that mean about who I am? And what does that mean about where I'm going? You know, an ENFJ, if they're dealing with a death in the family and they would want to cry about it or would want to uh, get upset about it, be there with family, process it, whatever. Some people might be like, oh, everyone dies. That's just how it is. Um, I don't need to, I don't need that much support about it. I don't need, you know, whatever. An ENFJ would really examine that emotion and be like, what does this mean about my life? This person's now gone. Now, where are they going? How can I think about what does it mean to live and how can I apply the lessons that this person taught me to my life? And so ENFJs definitely know how to examine what their emotions are and use them 
to create a better life. And, you know, ENFJs are the sorts of people that, uh, I would say, really have trouble coping in an environment that is not good for them. And this can make them seem kind of dramatic, kind of uh, like a baby, kind of entitled, kind of whiny. But ENFJs, we, we know what we don't, what we aren't okay with. And you know, if someone's being disrespectful, I'm not okay with that. And you know, one issue that I do find that a lot of us ENFJs have is how we seemingly can never be happy with anything because there's always a new thing that you want or there's always a new feeling you want to achieve. And a lot of times we have to be a little more realistic about what is actually, what the world actually has to offer. But the one thing that you'll realize about ENFJs is that the world is your oyster. Just because you hate your job, like to, for someone to say, oh, that's just how it is, an ENFJ is gonna be like, well, no, it doesn't have to be that way. So that's one lesson that I definitely feel that I'm always saying, that I'm sure you've heard ENFJ say, is that, you know, if your life sucks, it doesn't have to be that way. So think about what are you accepting what are you coping with? And how could you not cope with it? How could you find an, a way out? How could you listen to your emotions, trust them, honor them, and do something that will get you out of that environment that is causing you anxiety and stress? And oh, well, the culture doesn't allow that. Oh, well, there's no opportunities. Okay, well, why don't you influence the culture? Why don't you at least say how you feel? Because if you don't say how you feel, then people are gonna just keep doing the same thing because they don't know that it is impactful. And that's how ENFJs change the world is they notice this isn't okay. This isn't making me happy. This is not conducive for harmony. And then they say, hey, this system is not very good. It is causing me pain. It's causing them pain. It's causing them pain can't you notice like hello and then to have the courage to say that is the only way that we can actually improve because if you don't even talk about it then people are just going to go on coping and go on pretending like everything's fine and you know what it's not fine and you know a lot of you guys might think that ENFJs are super naive and super uh, positive and just you know you know wanting to think that everything's fine um I would love to meet an ENFJ that thinks things are fine. Honestly, like ENFJs will create a life that they are okay with more than others and always try and look at the sunny side of things. But <laughs> most ENFJs know that like the world ain't fine. You know, war is going on, poverty, like the that's not fine. <laughs> like, you know, ENFJs know that it's not fine. Like we know that things are not roses and daisies and all these things we just choose to say ENFJs have the audacity to say this is not okay with me I'm not happy I think that things should be better I think that we as the human race can you know figure out how to not kill each other oh can we also figure out how to not be total assholes that would be great you know ENFJs are the ones that are you know bold enough to say I, I hate this you know you're an asshole you're disrespecting me. That needs to stop. That's not okay with me. And a lot of times, you know, you might think that it's like the thinkers or like the FI users that have the audacity to say these things, but that's FE. That's like FE to say, declare how I feel. And FE is not just gonna go with whatever the group is doing. You know, ENFJs and even ESFJs, Mostly ENFJs are not great at coping when society sucks. ENFJs will cry whenever there's political, um, you know, division going on in their town. ENFJs will soak all that up and be like, this is not okay. ENFJs do not pretend like everything's okay. They do not um, just go with it because that's how things are. They are the absolute opposite of that. And if you guys are watching this and you think that I am different than some ENFJs because I seem bold and outspoken, you need to meet more ENFJs because I am sick of getting comments like that because I am not more thinky or bold or whatever than any ENFJ that I have ever met. ENFJs are like this. ENFJs do not take shit from people. They just are going to be nice to you because it's the right thing to do because they are not gonna be able to sleep at night if they knew that they contributed to 
the um, disharmony in the world. If you're like, and you know, I was talking to someone about this the other day, a lot of like TPs or like thinkers in general, but anyone who really uses TI, sometimes they feel like saying the truth that you cannot also be kind and then also say the truth. Uh, ENFJs do not agree with that at all. It is quite possible to be kind and to also be honest and to also tell the truth and to also, you know, get the job done. It's possible to have a business and be kind. You know, you might look up conscious capitalism. It is possible to have a purpose-driven business. It is possible to pay your employees a living wage if you cared. Do you care? You know, like, it. why don't you get a little creative and, you know, try and be respectful uh, and, you know, I think that people that aren't thinking about respect, they're lazy and they're dumb, honestly. If you cannot include respect in what you're doing, then try harder, be more creative. Especially the NTs out there. I know a lot of you NTs already do this. I have so many NT friends that are incredibly respectful and kind and are doing great things to better the world and themselves, but a lot of the times it is the NTs that they care so much about truth or they care so much about success that they literally forget that, you know, you can also be kind and do that. Uh, you know, nobody's stopping you. That's not putting any limits on anything. So try and be more creative. You know, that's, you know, some insight that an ENFJ would say is that, you know, the way things are <laughs> is not okay. Um, to just be resigned to the fact that there's always going to be war is incredibly lazy. Like, why don't you try harder and come up with a better solution? Because this solution's not working. Just because it's the best solution that we've come to so far as a society, as a world, it's clearly not working. And, you know, we've evolved. Um, you know, we aren't, uh, you know, Neanderthals anymore. We know how to build communities. We know how to create an internet. Why? Because we cared. We cared enough about building an internet. We cared enough about building an iPhone. We cared enough about connecting. Do we care enough about, you know, getting along with each other? Do you? Do you care enough about stopping war, stopping poverty? Do you care enough about education? Do you care enough about your community? Because it is possible to solve problems if you care about it. And you know, some people just don't care. They're just resigned to not caring. So if you can give a shit about something in life, then you're doing something right. And that, you know, is, you know, a lesson from an ENFJ. And, you know, I'm getting riled up because I'm an ENFJ. And I feel like I'm trying to, you know, channel the collective ENFJ wisdom here. Another thing that I would say about ENFJs is that, gosh, I have this idea before I even st started this video. Is that I think that, um, hmm. Hold on a moment, guys. Uh, I think that ENFJs, it's like the following your heart thing is just like part of it. It's kind of like taking a risk for what you want. Um, gosh. Oh, I know what I was going to say. Okay. So. ENFJs know that people that want to be successful and do whatever it takes to get there and, you know, they compromise their character in the process, they might make millions of dollars, but that's not going to make them happy. Similarly to what I said in the ESFJ video about how ESFJs, um, they know that if you cannot be happy with the little things, then you aren't gonna be happy chasing a big dream. ENFJs know that at the end of the day, love really is all there is. And so if you are constantly compromising your character and your values and those around you, the people that you love, for some shiny object or some sort of recognition, that's fleeting and you aren't going to be happy. Um, something that I would always feel like while in college or in school that I have noticed a lot of NFJs also feel is I would slack off on school if there was something that was really important going on. Like for example, 
if there was a uh, family emergency or if there was like a here, here here's something I did I was in speech and debate while in high school and almost every single weekend I went to a speech and debate tournament and all of my best friends were there it was like the time of my life and I knew my senior year that I was never gonna have anything like that again and that I was going to miss it and so I took the ACT like I think two or three times but I didn't get the score I wanted even after the third time and I feel like someone who's like a TJ for example would be thinking about their future and be like I know I gotta get a better score but for me I would have had to miss tournaments in order to take the ACT, which was only offered on Saturdays. And I asked myself while I was in high school, what is going to matter more to me in the long run? Getting a better score or my friends that I'm never going to be in the same town as, as a high schooler ever again. I, I of course went with my friends and those experiences because you cannot create those experiences. Like those are priceless and I almost always choose, you know, those sort of experiences. And so ENFJs can look a little bit impulsive if they do things where it's, they might seem sort of like YOLO, whatever, but they aren't YOLO, you only live once in like an ESFP or ESTP way. It's very deep NI, like what is gonna matter to me in the long run? I'm not saying there's anything wrong with SPs chasing experiences, but whenever ENFJs chase experiences it's because they know that it's what they value in the long run and another thing that ENFJs know is that technology as it improves you know robots or whatever are going to take our jobs whatever but no robot can ever you know uh do passion like human passion is priceless and if you have passion then you're unstoppable in the job market and in life because nobody can ever be you like you are you and you're the only you that you could be and you have no nothing to fear of you know not being useful in other ways so whenever you're judging yourself based on what you're used for you are never going to be happy if you're judging yourself based on who you are and your passions then nobody can ever replace you and so I, for one, am, have never been worried about robots taking my jobs or whatever because a robot is never going to be me. I'm Megan. A robot can't make these YouTube videos and understand people like, like how I am. And, uh, you know, if you don't, passion is something, your passion is something that nobody else can ever take away from you. It's completely yours. And ENFJs know that, you know, and... That's why ENFJs can seem super confident because it's like, I'm the best me that I could be. I've never ever wanted to be anyone else because why would I? Then I wouldn't be me. Then I wouldn't have my friends and I wouldn't have uh, my experiences. Um, and ENFJs would never get caught up. I remember I had a couple NTP friends in college that really wanted to be selected into this secret society uh, in this like, secret like smart fraternity uh at school and they were really upset when they didn't get it they were like this is gonna ruin my life i thought that this was gonna give me the job opportunities and these people in there are assholes okay it's like they wanted to be included by a group of people that they thought were assholes and enfj would never want like to be accepted by a group of people that they you know don't like um and what i was explaining to one of my friends at the time was like these people who are assholes they might get good grades but they're not going to be happy they're not going to be successful in the long run i just know that like people that do that they're uh, they get success through um through means that are slimy they're i trust so much that they they're gonna get what's coming to them you know i kind of believe in karma whatever but i also you know believe that extroverted feeling exists there is a common uh human uh harmony sort of perspective a collective emotion that you know exists and is enforced upon the world just like te like exists like there are rules 
There are also social rules. Like you can't just be an asshole forever and not get called out because F, the pressure of FE will get you somehow. And people that are, um, you know, slimy and getting things by means that are not of high character, you don't have to worry about them because if you are being yourself and if you're trying your best, that's really all you could do and that's really all that's yours to do. So you can't, you shouldn't be jealous of someone for what they have whenever, like, I don't know. I think sometimes people get confused about that. I don't know, even, even NFPs sometimes can get confused about this where they'll be like, and a lot of NFPs will be like, I'm so upset that like, I know that I try to be a good person, but what's the use? Because NFPs will get caught up in their TE of like, what's the use? People are always gonna use me. Or I don't know how I'm gonna show my value because I'm not being useful enough. But like, I think that ENFJs, because we have TE as our eighth, an eighth function, our least priority. We really don't care if we're being useful. We care about being ourselves. And this can be a good or bad thing. Like, I really don't care if I'm useful. I don't really think about what are you using me for, whatever. I just wanna be the best Megan that I could be. And that's all I could do. And I'm that's the only way to be happy anyway. And so listening to myself, who I am, what I desire, and trying to go for that is really the only blueprint that will ever work for me. Anything that you say, that would work for me probably won't work for me. My own emotions know me way better than anyone else could and way better than any rule book could because my emotions come directly from who I am as a soul. And if I want something, there's a reason why I want it and I have to go for it because why wouldn't I? Or else the feeling's just gonna be there forever torturing me. Like to do things by the book or like how society says, or you know the best practices or whatever sort of success it's just such a fruitless endeavor the only way to get fruit you know a fruitful endeavor would be to listen to your heart so it's not just you know some nice sounding cute thing like it actually is the only practical way to be happy so you know that's essentially some insight from an ENFJ thank you for watching please join my Facebook group personality typology for self-growth below um, I would love to see you guys in there talking about your personality types and interacting with some other people in there. I hope you liked this video. Let me know, comment below what video you'd like me to do next in this series. Have a wonderful day.